Why am I so tired of feeling nice? Oh, hello, folks. Welcome to another show, the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I'm still working on that girlfriend part. But, um, thank you all who viewed my raw review. My, should have been a raw review show. The Hell in a Cell review show. Um, yeah. So now it's time to move on to Raw. I was a 50-50 booker, but again, I barely knew anything. Oh, before I start that, Mike C. You, sir, told Jordan Grace that she has the back. Oh, my God. Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Mike C. gets his complimentary video shout out from me. He left a comment. He kind of agreed with me. Um, my whole thing about Hell in a Cell, I'll recap it very quickly. <laughs> it will take two minutes to recap. Besides two or three matches, it just seemed like a glorified Raw. The last match, I think it's somewhat growing on me. I mean, if they're not going to have Bray or the Fiend win the title, having them win because Seth has to go cuckoo. Yeah, I kind of get it. So again, the Becky, don't get me wrong, the Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, Hell in a Cell match was amazing. That was a Hell in a Cell match. And that was worthy of a pay-per-view match. The... Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. That was worthy of being on a pay-per-view. The woman's tag was... The Green Mist did it for me. So that's worthy of a pay-per-view. Everything else they could have switched on tonight's Raw. And tonight's Raw might have been better. Because WWE is coming up with this thing where... Their shows, their Raws after the pay per views. Eh. Uh, starts off, it cuts off. It's supposed to have a match between Rusev versus Randy Orton. Uh, Baron Corbin's there. It had a really weird start. It's like a kind of cold start. And they got the hot start. It's like something was wrong with the timing or something. So it just had that weird feeling. But, yeah, this, this was a raw to kind of sleep through. It, it kind of dragged on, then it picked up. But, I'll talk about it anyway, though. Um, so, it's the Rusev Show! Rusev is the best. Rusev number one. Uh, but, so, it starts off, uh, Baron Corbin and Randy Orton just beat up Rusev. And then the Titan Tron. Whoa! What's Bobby Lashley doing in one of Rusev's robes? In Rusev's house? In Rusev's bedroom? In Rusev's bed? And Lana. Hit my music. Yeah, you know what kind of music I'm talking about. From the early 80s, too. The really bad stuff. But it's... <laughs> and, oh, by the way, thank you, Lana. We had an almost televised sex show. Again, it's not going to be like a live sex show from uh, Lita and Edgehead. It was close And Rusev must really like Bobby Lashley to let him get in bed with his wife. But then Rusev goes bonkers. Rusev, Rusev Machka, Rusev destroy. Started. <laughs> I, tell you what, I thought he was going to kill poor Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin looked up and was like, oh, I should stay here some more. Now Randy Orton was selling like a champ. And, and that's all it was. And that's how Raw opened. Yep. It went from sex show to snuff film. 
And the funny thing is, they did not mention Hell in a Cell for a good, well, I'll say about two hours. It wasn't until the 10 o'clock hour until the Miz on this TV brought up with both Charlotte and Becky. That's a tell that your show's not that good. And, oh, hi, Jane. And, hi, Tio. Or, hi, Ted. I can't read my own writing sometimes. But um, it starts off proper with Lacey, Ev Lacey Evans and Natalia in a last one standing match. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It was long. Uh, Natalia, oh, dude, she can slap someone. That's pretty good. Uh, Natty controlled the first half of the match. Once they get outside, and Lacey gets her moments on the outside. She tossed Natty into the comfy chair, which is just awkward. I can't imagine it hurts because they're cushiony and everything. They're for the timekeeper, and they just have to like, literally like, sit there and ring a bell. Ding! Or ding ding. Whatever they do in like hold belts. So you know they have to be comfy because they have to sit down literally for like three hours. Probably more. Or at least I get a chance to use the bathroom. And get a snack or something or or, or like I was down there combing my cute because she's cute and fuzzy and taking her nap in her bed right next to my office. Well right next to my desk. And I think she's off looking out windows somewhere. This is when she likes to look out windows, so you let her have her moment. But with this match, again, oh, they keep Mountain Dew under the ring and Coca-Cola with water, which is weird because Mountain Dew's a Pepsi product. Coca-Cola's his own product. WWE, what are you doing? Then eventually there's a pretty cool... Ch um, Ch chair spot. Uh, Lacey Evans just beat up Natalia with kendo sticks. Why do they have kendo sticks? Just laying around randomly. Uh, I can see sledgehammers, pipe wrenches, toolkits, chairs, tables. Kendo sticks? Really? Mop handles. That would be a good... That would be something different. So. Lacey beats up Natalia every time it seems like Natalia's going to get up. Lacey does the smart thing and just beats her up, just hits her over the back with a kendo stick so she falls out again. So there, there were repeated counts most of the time until nine. But Lacey got smart. Lacey sat Natalia in a chair, put. Let's see here. So here. You have the arms of a chair. She put said kendo stick underneath the arms with Natalia oh, wait. sitting in said chair and just, I think, knocked the chair over. And for a while, Natalia was... It actually took Natalia a lot longer to get out of that chair than it should have. I don't even think she hit her. She just like pushed a chair over. Oh, Natalia, stuck! How could you get up? Oh. Uh, so that was pretty. That was, that was, I'll give creativity points. Again, it was kind of a brawl match, so I can understand a lot of stuff. And of course, Natalia hulks up. Yeah. I'm sorry to know, saw some kendo stick shot. She was getting upset. <laughs> Lacey Evans brought a trash can had had Natalia's name on it. Hit her right in the gut with a trash can. And this trash can had actual trash in it, too. I mean, like, legitimate stadium garbage. Like, there was, like, cheeseburger fries. Like, a soda cup. Napkins. You would find that in an arena. I like that. So, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and the stage no-sold. And <laughs> actually, that <laughs> was funny. Because... Lacey Evans threw Natalia against the wall on the stage, but because now it has that kind of like quarter pipe slope, like Natalia jumped up and literally like slid down. 
That was almost humorous. I wonder if I wonder if he has like rug burn, or like road rash on that. She is wearing that weird vinyl outfit. I don't know. That can't that can't be pleasant. It doesn't hurt, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to hurt. It can just be not pleasant. And then Lacey Evans gets on top of the table, and and Jerry Lawler is like is confused. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what they done to the table, but the table no sold. Like he, I think she got, I think Natalia got slammed on the table. The table did not break. The table went in business for itself. Eventually, Nat Natal, uh, Natalia gets tossed on the stage again, slides back down. That almost looks like fun. And then Natalia powerbomb Lacey off the stage through a table. Lacey does not answer the ten count. Natalia's the winner, and I'll tell you what, this was a good, fun cheeseburger match. And then Jerry the King Lawler just was confused, because generally in the past, when women would stand on the table, he'd say something lewd to them, which he probably should do still. It looks like he's almost holding back, and he just like looks confused. Uh, then we have promos from Aleister Black, the Street Profits, and Tyson Fury. The yeah, Aleister Black, come fight me! The Street Profits do their thing. Tyson Fury's in the back. The hot wife. A lot of kids, too. I probably shouldn't say that because you could probably kill me. That's a whole other issue. I'm safe in my office, though. <laughs> uh, then the next match was Viking Raiders versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. And for a change, there's a lot of mat wrestling done by the Viking Raiders. Especially by, I think, Eric, I think. Face of the room is, is Eric and Rowan. That's Ivar and Rowan. So, or is it Eric and Ivar? Uh, I just know they're the Viking Raiders. And for, <laughs> I'll tell you what, when uh, Ivar gets tagged in, the bigger of the two, your poor Dolph looks like he's getting the snot beat out of him. It's a good. And then the Viking Raiders, they like to use, use, just, uh, use each other as weapons. That was confusing for some reason. That's fun. Eric, again, yeah, he was more into the mat wrestling. I think he actually was a high school or college wrestler. I mean, Dolph's known for being a collegiate wrestler. Rude's a technical wizard. I'll tell you what, Rude still, Rude has the second best spine buster. Considering the first one's been retired by Arnie Anderson. And the third best is Carl Anderson. We'll see you later. And that's, I mean, that's pretty high praise for, for all three of those guys. Uh, eventually, there's a handoff power slam. Dolph Ziggler does hit the zigzag on Ivar, gets him out of the ring. They hit a combo spine, spine buster zigzag. Uh, Rude waits too long for the Glorious DDT. And I think poor Dolph pays for it. Because I think it's just like the trade off power slam. And it was a fun match. It's a good cheeseburger match. Then we have, wow, well, maybe this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Then we have the Bollywood boys, both of them. The, the Singh brothers. They they call out Aleister Black. Aleister Black kicks one of them in the head and knocks him out. Uh, yeah. Beats up the other one. The Bollywood gets about five seconds of tag team on him. He kicks him in the head. There's that new, like, seer. Awazi Death Clutch? like a modified dragon sleeper where he like has your head and an arm and then somehow reaches behind his back. It looks more painful to him than it does to the other guy. But for all intents and purposes this was a squash match. It was different though. I can appreciate it. At least Alistair Black got on TV without saying I want you to knock on my door and pick a fight with me. So therefore, this match 
is a ham sandwich. And then, oh, I know why it seemed so long. There were a lot of promos in between. Of course, Rusev. Rus, it's Rusev Day! This is Lashley Day. And oh, also, Lana lost her Russian accent. No longer the ravaging Russian Lana is. Now she's just playing a sea Lana who likes to sleep around a lot. Yuck. People from Tennessee. Jeez. Hate the South. There are reasons why the South lost the war. Uh oh, I shouldn't be saying that. What, what can YouTube do? Can they demonetize me for that? <clears throat> so, again, you had a Braun promo, a Rey Mysterio promo, author of Pain Pump promo. Um, then we have the club. Because they're too. Sweet! Taking on the Lucha house party. Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. And that reminds me, I need to get the card ready for Columbus Day. I have to make a Christopher Columbus. Then I won't have another match until Thanksgiving. I have to make the Gobbly Gooker. Or the Pil... <laughs> I'll make the Pilgrim. Jeez, I have way too much free time. Well, not now, but that's going to be interesting. So we have the club versus Lucha House Party. The club, very, very typical. Um, just to try to brawl Lucha House Party around. Going to just beat them up a lot. Uh, it all depends who's there. Lucha House Party. They had a couple of cool moments, though. They did the one. I think it was Lindsay Dorado got on the shoulders of Grand Metal League and did a splash from there, which is a lot taller than the than the top turnbuckle. So that was cool to see. Um, Kalisto tees a Selena Del Sol. There was a triple moonsault. They all stood on one corner. I have no idea how they fit on that. But they all f stood there and they all did, I think, like a triple moonsault. Because it made sense because you had, you had Carl Anderson Luke Gallows and then AJ Styles, so they kind of like like a little Starbucks moonsault. That's a cool name for a move. I like that. I I, sh I should copyright that. Charge WWE a nickel every time they do the Starburst moonsault. Uh, then Lindsay Dorado's in there. I'll tell you what, AJ is so good with anyone. Um, AJ. AJ, for some reason, got a mouse underneath his eye. I know. It looks like he got, like, hurricaned face first into the ring. Looks like he had, like, a little mouse under his eye. I don't know that, or maybe lack of sleep. He had to deal with Helen Sullen, this nonsense. So it, could, so it could have been that, too. So, of course, uh, the club win. Uh, he has the phenomenal forearm on Kalisto, I think. Uh, the club win. And then, like, no, 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 we're not done. We're going to beat them up some more. He took Lindsay Dorado, gave him the second rope style splash, threw him out. Yep, he's living up in King of Trios part dos for him, or King of Trios in the WWE. And this took us really to the 10 o'clock hour, and this was the first mention of... Anything of Hell in a Cell. I should go check that. I wonder what's up. Let's see here. Oh, why, oh, why is my cell phone going off? Do they need me for work? Oh, not yet. Nope. Not yet. Oh, I should put this on, too. Yeah, so this will be weird. Let's see here. Okay, yes, I'm back. Hello. Um, let's see here. Everything okay? Okay. Kissy face. But that match, 
it was fun. I'll tell you what, it really was a. It was a. I'm so partial to AJ though, and they seem so smooth. That was a cheeseburger match. Let's see if I can get this in on ten minutes. So if Miss TV, um, they uh, he brings out Becky and Charlotte. They talk about first time they talk about Hell in a Cell. It took literally like two hours for them to talk about Hell in a Cell. So, so that was kind of impressive. Um, they mentioned their matches, and then how they have a match against the Kabuki Warriors. Asuka starts speaking in Japanese. I have no idea what Asuka was saying. It sounded so cool and badass, though. Asuka could say, I'd like to order a cheeseburger, large fries, and a, extra, and a souvenir cup Mountain Dew in Japanese. And it would sound intimidating. I mean, as far as I as far as I know, I mean, she she was talking about how cool the backstage is, and how cushiony the carpet looked in the ring. I have no idea. And then something funny happened. She probably told a joke. She probably <laughs> Kyrie Sane probably told a joke. What's the difference between a piano and a fish? She can tune a piano, but she can't tune a fish. Yes, that makes me laugh too. Uh, so eventually they just start to brawl, and then the Kabuki words get tossed out, and we go to commercial break because they have to reset the ring. So with the ring, again, the, the, I'll tell you what, the Kabuki Warriors, they're a great tag team. They do amazing tag team work. I like the fact the tag team works fast. It's in the ring. It's off the ropes. It's in the corners. It's really all over the place, and it looks really well coordinated. Like They've been like the old brother tag teams, because the brother tag teams, they say, oh, yeah, they've been doing this all their life. They, they know each other inside out. I know um, they were a tag team. I forget if it was in Stardom, Joshi, FMW, or whatever other all all women's league in Japan. Like 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 women's New Japan Pro Wrestling, but uh, they were there in, with Io Shirai, and I think they were their triple tails. I think I think now they're just a double tails. But still, that was pretty cool though. Uh, Charlotte, she does that moon salt uh, on both Kabuki Warriors. Charlotte's landing more a lot on her feet, and she's still not looking as pretty. There were rumors, and I just say only rumors coming from a hobo. Uh, she's had like plastic surgery done. I don't know. I just know that for some reason, it's that or she's wearing way too much makeup. She just doesn't look like she used to. Let's see how is your night going? Are you getting ready for bed? Um, but it was a fun match. Uh, eventually, Becky hit the, d the double drop kick on both of them and didn't hit Asuka's match. He kind of rolls out. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Uh, gets Io Shirai in the Disarmor, but then of course Charlotte was in the ring. Oscar took out Charlotte's knee, so the ref has to help Charlotte back and see make sure that she's okay. While he's doing that, <laughs> the green mist comes out. Yes, yes, yes. More green mist, the better. Becky gets sprayed all over with green mist. Uh, gets the roll up win and. Kabuki Warriors win. They actually retain their title. So that's pretty good. Again, Kyrie Sane changed her hair too. She has pigtails. She's cute looking now. Oscar grew her hair out. I like this. This is really good. I like this look. It's a really good look. I like that look. Uh, then, so that was a fun match. That's another cheeseburger match.
Then the final match of the night uh, was Ricochet versus Apollo Crews. And this was a very technical match. Um, it was a face versus face. So fast, so flippy. Both of them can do amazing work. Uh, Cruz does that standing moonsault. Ricochet can just flip over him like, like, like not even there. It could have been longer, but I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. Uh, Ricochet did go over. And this was a kind of, again, a showcase face versus face match. It was pretty good. You could tell like they were having fun. They're like, yeah, that was cool. Flat five, like, okay, yeah, we got this. So, this was a fun match. It was a, sh a short match. I'll tell you what, this is a good, another solid cheeseburger match. I think the fact that they didn't mention Hell in a Cell, they had a bunch of promos, they started off a weird way. Yeah. Maybe that's why this. The scene. Well, it did go by quickly in certain parts. The last hour just seemed to be long, though. Because then they spent a good 20 minutes. There was a recap of Hell, Hell in a Cell. And then Tyson Fury came out to the ring. And then, of course, Ron Strowman came out to the ring. First security trying to separate the two. And, and not happening. Then they started just grappling with each other. I don't know why. Just knock him out. Pop. And then the, the, the locker room came out. The loser locker room, and I'm disappointed because there's no way Cesaro and The Miz should ever be near the loser locker room. I don't think The Miz has been in the loser locker room since the infamous incident that when Chris Benoit kicked him out of the locker room for eating chicken in the locker room. But, so I predict... And I might be wrong, but I say it's going to be... Oh, maybe I am wrong. But I'll say it's going to be Tyson Fury versus Braun Strowman at Crown Jewel, which I won't be covering because that's Halloween and I'm working. I have it on a Friday. Like, Friday at 1 p.m. I could cover most of it. But... But that was it. In a really weird show... And now I know the magic marks 27 minutes because my camera just cut out. Although, the, probably the good thing is, my voice in the video is probably better synced up than it normally is. So, I'll tell you what, overall, this, this raw just felt like a ham sandwich. And again, if it wasn't for the promos. The matches were good. Nothing spectacular. They, they didn't. I think it's because they shied away so much from Hell in a Cell. Where it's like, really? They just wanted to move on to the money show. At this, this hey, listen, this, this Saudi Arabia gave me a hundred thousand dollars to go get smacked around in their show. I'd be the first one saying, oh, "I'm out of there. I'm out of here at least. I'm going to Saudi Arabia for even if." I would show up that morning, catch the red-eye flight back, take my lumps, sign autographs, and I'd be like, Phew. so even after tax, let's say they take half out, so that's 50000 Plane ticket, let's say 2000 I'd still be making more than I, than I have in like three years. So I would take the Saudi money too. And if you don't, you're lying to yourself. So everyone have a good night. And remember, I have off tomorrow. There's no wrestling tomorrow. So you won't see me again until Wednesday night when I do my AEW review. And then Friday is going to be Impact. Or Smacked on an Impact. And then Monday is going to be a double show. Ooh, that's right. Monday is a double show. So I do my Columbus Day show. Stay tuned for that, folks. On that, everyone have a good night.